Now, with the coming in of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government, sales volume in the property space has shot up 15%. And this only in anticipation that home prices would appreciate in the coming months. But is this sudden surge only a blip? Prerna Barua is here to tell us more. Prerna, what are you picking up on the sector? Well, that's right. The real estate sector has been yearning for a revival after facing disappointment time and again. The sector now expects that the new government would add impetus to the ailing sector and revive investor sentiments. We learned that only in the last one month, sales volume have shot up up to 15% post a decisive mandate and on anticipation that home prices would increase. We've also seen realty stocks bouncing back on positive sentiments from the new government. Also, some kind of enthusiasm among HNIs and non-resident Indians who are revisiting their investment plans in India. Clearly, property is once again going to become the most popular investment option as there are hopes of appreciation in real estate prices on the heels of higher demand in the coming years. But this positivity may be short-lived. We need to know that issues such as affordability, delayed construction projects and slow approvals has adversely impacted developers as well as consumers. With the slowdown in home sales, developers have been battling a severe liquidity crunch and inventory levels are growing at a frightening pace. Fast tracking of infrastructure reforms by the new government will also bear fruit only in the next three to four years. Also, revival in the economy will translate into revival in the realty sector once the economic fundamentals are tackled. But meanwhile, consumers are optimistic about the impact that the new government will have on the real estate space but in more likelihood it is only a price correction that will boost sales volume in the coming months back to you all right uh, in fact joining us on this now is Gulam Zia national director with international property consultant Knight Frank to discuss really if this turnaround is a blip or here to stay what do you make of it uh, Gulam a 15 percent jump uh, is, is it sustainable well, it is not really sustainable because uh, we have seen uh, the blip due to sentiments are not long lived. And especially because uh, the investors, and in, mind you, it's only in housing. It hasn't really impacted much on other reality sectors, whether it is uh, offices or retail, etc., etc. And housing, because it is essentially driven by, uh, uh, you know, uh, small players, uh, people like you and I who invest. And here, the sentiments play an important role. So like... Uh, stock markets, even real estate, when there is a strong impact on sentiments, sure. does see that blip. And and this is just that. I don't think it will last long. Perhaps another uh, a couple of months, you will see this happening. And beyond that, reality has to sink in. You know, the, the other logic and the other follow-up to that is that you've actually seen a little bit of a price correction in the last couple of months or so. Now, you know, arguably, that probably led to this kind of a volume jump as well. But is that equation sustainable? Do you believe that could actually carry on? I mean, the price correction that we've seen probably to give that a little bit of a volume burst, you know, will this sustain or that dynamic also is set to change? Well, uh, on one side, you have demand supply dynamics. On the other side, the price sensitivities. On and then. In, in the backdrop, it's always the economy which okay. drives the sentiments or ability to pay for a new house. So the economic change is something which all of us are talking about and so uh, upbeat about. On the other side, demand supply hasn't changed much because uh, the money has to come in your and my pocket to really spend on buying that dream house of ours. And then subsequently, the prices, which will be ultimately in the hands of developers. And then as I, as I was mentioning in the break when we are talking, that ultimately the sector can be salvaged only if consumers come back and start lapping up the, the inventory. And okay. till it's not happening, it will remain the same. So the need of the hour is for developers to realize that the prices have to come down further for sure. volumes to come back in the market. So when do you see that happening? Because uh, as you said, everyone's watching out for that correction. Well, uh, when is a big question because uh, it's ultimately the sustainability, the ability of a developer to raise funding. And as we're talking about, there are so many other channels expected to open up, like, for example, REIT and so on and so forth. And we have seen it in past that when developers have multiple channels of fund coming in, consumer is the last uh, preference for them. And hence, price correction takes a backseat. Yeah, but, but the other thing out here is, the market, as you mentioned, the equity markets per se, they've, they've seen a huge rise. They've all sprung up. And one of the key points here has been the strong mandate at the center. And clearly, looking at the agenda, looking at the kind of initial commentary, it's all about infra and the reform push itself. From the sector standpoint out here, do you believe the kind of commentary that we're picking up in terms of infrastructure, real estate will also get impacted and probably you'll see some kind of uh, you know changes here in the sector? Well, 
uh, uh, you brought up a very good point, which has a serious impact on real estate prices. You're talking about infrastructure. Infrastructure, while obviously it's going to take some time to uh, sink sure, in and sure. come to the ground, but then uh, a few cases in point I would want to highlight, like for example, two cities, Ahmedabad and Hyderabad, mm. have fantastic, fabulous infrastructure in place, and these cities haven't seen price rise at all. Okay. The point I'm trying to drive across is that if infrastructure is fantastic, then price are under curve. And that is something like, for example, a city like Mumbai is on the extreme other end of it. Yeah. Hardly any infrastructure bursting to its seams and because of that, people are willing to pay that extra dollar to remain close to their place of works or places of preference, etc. Sure. So infrastructure improvement will definitely have a, a, a downward pressure on uh, price points, but that's something which will have to wait for at least three, four years. So, you know, Glamath, one, one argument says that the reason people have rushed in to buy at this time is because they're actually expecting prices to go up. Uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, I just want to understand what you really feel is the way forward. Because as you said, you need we need to see a correction in the market. We need the unsold inventory as well, just to sort of you know go off the racks. But uh, it, there's a perception that we might see the opposite happening, which is true. <laughs> Well, it's absolutely right. As I mentioned that this is perhaps a, a, a kind of a panic. Right. Uh, the buyers today are concerned that the prices will continue to go up because uh, the economy is good, looking good. And when the economy was not uh, so good, there was so much of price rise. So when the economy is up, then obviously prices will go up. So in that, I would say it's a small panic phase where people who are buying today are only trying to uh, get the best deal out of the market. And hence, the whatever volumes that we see are coming because of that. Two things that you're keeping an eye out for, for the sector going forward from here. As I said, uh, I, I'm extremely keen to see infrastructure change. And especially you and I live in a city like Mumbai and only dream of uh, infrastructures of places like even Delhi or Ahmedabad, etc. have really improved a lot. Okay. So I would, my expectation is to see that kind of infrastructure coming. And I'm not talking about the Singapore's and New York's. I'm yet benchmarking ourselves with an Ahmedabad or a Delhi for that sure. matter. So that kind of infrastructure is point number one. Point number two is that uh, developers do see the reality and then correct the prices. Okay, just, just one, one final question. In terms of the, the kind of uh, uh, the pickup, where have we seen it in terms of the kind of properties? Is it still the affordable uh, you know, market that's picking up or do you also see a boom in the luxury segment? Well, affordable market has always been selling, you know, because that's, that's, that there's always been a pent up demand in that segment. Uh, the luxury market, uh, you know, actually is driven by how the economy is faring. Okay. The high-end uh, society would rather invest or wait for the economy to look back before they invest that high, huge amounts sure. into real estate, etc. Whereas uh, the, the low end of the society, the affordable housing has always been doing great. And cities where housing has been in the range of two to 3,000 rupees a square feet, there are quite a few cities in India, have really always been uh, doing business and not really out of business at all. It's only places like Mumbai, to a certain extent, uh, definitely Delhi, to a certain extent, Bangalore, etc., where the luxury segment has really sprung up in last half a decade or so, where developers in that segment are feeling the heat. Okay. But the, those who were in affordable section were always selling.